Thank you. We will, uh, on our uh, schedule this morning, we have our executive session for SB 61. And um, I'm going to open up that exec session and I believe I have a motion from Representative Bixby. Yes, I'd like to um, move amendment uh, 19, uh, 2023-1979H and uh, this, what this, oh, uh, right. Oh, and I would second that. Okay, so um, in would this you please speak to your amendment, yes, Representative Bixby? Yes, please. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so uh, in this amendment, I've tried to include as much of the uh, commentary and discussion that we got, uh, that we had uh, when we did our work session uh, um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and uh, there are, uh, with the proviso that I also was in contact with um, not, uh, representatives from stakeholders uh, on, uh, on several sides of the issue, uh, including uh, representatives from uh, the um, North Country um, Alliance for Balanced Change and uh, representative from uh, the solid waste industry and uh, and represent and uh, through third parties uh, representatives from DES and uh, and uh, with Senator Waters um, and uh, I was getting advice about uh, what may or may not be uh, acceptable to the other body and uh, unfortunately uh, there were several issues that I really wanted to address in this that would not be acceptable to the other body and uh, those were not those are not included in the amendment uh, that one of those would be uh, the um, variability of the time of travel over the site and uh, the idea that uh, the only down gradient um, uh, groundwater would be uh, recognized. The ground, downwater gradient issue is not as significant because that's part of the findings rather than part of the legislation itself. I was also not able to get the idea that uh, the consultant should look at the state laws uh, in in other states, um, and I regret that I wasn't able to get those. But uh, what I did manage to get was um, I'll start with um, at the bottom of page one. Uh, there was this is at the end of the uh, section that discusses uh, measures that could be used to um, uh, to uh, improve to. Uh, change the uh, time of travel measurement uh, uh, or, or the, the, the ultimate distance away from a uh, water body. Uh, the, there was discussion in committee that uh, section B was uh, not what was very difficult to interpret just for uh, language reasons and I worked on rewriting that uh, and uh, so that now reads if a permit application includes any measure pursuant to RSA 149M915A and the department relies on such a measure uh, in the department's formulation of the site-specific setback required by RSA 149M73A, the department shall include such a measure as a condition to the permit. And uh, I think this actually makes that uh, that requirement that any measure that gets uh, used to change the uh, the ultimate setback needs to be uh, specifically included as a condition uh, for the permit, and uh, so that um, that was one change. Uh, the uh, uh, next change is uh, the um, uh, conflict of input. In Influence conflict of interest language. Uh, it was pointed out that to me that the way that we had it set up previously 
was in some sense circular and uh, would actually end up only applying to a solid waste company, whereas what we actually wanted to, uh, the place where we want to prevent the conflict of interest is with the consultant. So uh, we, uh, it, uh, and it was also pointed out that there exists in statute already a conf conflict of interest language, uh, and I don't remember the citation right now, but um, I can find it if anyone, later if anyone's interested. The department shall include in a request for proposals provisions designed to prevent a situation, circumstance, or financial interest which has the reasonable potential to cause a prospective contractor's interest to interfere with the contractor's duties under the request for proposals and require disclosure in the response on, to the request for proposal submission by the consulting form, firm. Uh, okay, the, there's a typo here that um, we will need to um, get fixed, but the consulting firm or individual. Uh, so uh, I think that actually does a pretty good job of laying out what potential conflicts of interests are and, um, and that uh, they need to be, um, that, that uh, that's something that the department has to be careful of. Uh, and uh, also added to, uh, in, in uh, line 33 below that, uh, when the uh, consultant um, sends in their response, their um, proposal for, uh, to the, for the RFP, that proposal needs to disclose any potential, uh, potential conflicts of interest. Um, so, uh, so that conflict of interest language was something that the committee felt uh, needed to be solidly in place, and I think that this language does that. Um, the next, uh, another issue that we had was that we wanted to have the report sent directly to us, and that language is at line 35 to 37. The department shall provide the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee and the House Environment and Agriculture Committee with electronic copies of the report. And shall make, make and, and, and as it said before, it should also be on the website. Um, and uh, the next uh, section that, uh, where there's a change is, um, the creation of an extension, and this has been um, rather complicated to negotiate, uh, and um, it ended up um, the way that we had that I had it in the previous draft uh, did not uh, pass muster with OLS because they said that there was a um, separation of powers issue with the way it was written, and that it could potentially create a precedent that would be problematic. Uh, so, uh, um, it's gone through a couple of rewrites, rewrites since then, including one um, that happened between 9 and 10 this morning. Uh, and uh, so, the, the way that reads now is, if the department is, uh, this is on page 3, line 29. If the department is unable to complete adoption of the rules as required under this section as a result of a natural disaster, civil emergency, epidemic, or pandem pandemic, or other extraordinary circumstances substantially interfering with the customary operation of the department or state government, the commissioner may file for a waiver to extend the deadline under RSA 541A40, uh, Roman 4. During such time, the abeyance of approval of applications as outlined in subparagraph B of this uh, section shall continue in effect for no more than 90 days. And uh, we also increased the amount of money available to the department to hire con the consultant from 150000 to 200000 So uh, those are the changes. And uh, in terms of what, what I think is really important here, I think that it is very important that we have an abeyance for uh, uh, in place, in, either until the rules are made, uh, essentially until the rules are made. And uh, I am hoping that the department will be able to do that within the scheduled amount of time, and I'm, I'm confident that they have that ability. Uh, and I think that that abeyance is really critical uh, because I don't think that um, we should have any permits going forward under the current rules, and if 
uh, we don't get this amendment in place and we don't get the um, get this bill passed, then the current rules will take effect as soon as this bill fails. Uh, that is, for me, that's the bottom line. And I'd oh, be happy to see the discussion to others. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Representative Gerana. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I want to thank Representative Bixby for all the hard work uh, that he's done, and Representative Murray and others. Um, I'll have more to say when we get to, to vote on the, the whole uh, bill later on. I will just add at this point that for me, the inability to add language about variability across the site ultimately is the straw that's going to break the camel's back in terms of my ability to vote for this bill or not. So I want to uh, express my appreciation, uh, but also my supreme disappointment that that wasn't, um, we weren't able to get that added to the bill. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion about this amendment? Representative Howard. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the uh, members of the committee on both sides of the aisle who worked to make this amendment the best it could be under, these cir under the circumstances. I intend to vote for the amendment because it moves us closer to being able to protect the citizens of New Hampshire from present and future toxins leaching from landfills. It has not gone far enough, though, and I believe it, this is due to the process by which it was formed. Early on, the parameters were defined by a veiled threat from the executive branch. Then during negotiations, a representative from, of the industry, most affected by this bill, sat in to basically confirm that the threat was real. I'm new at this political stuff. And and maybe that's a good thing, because I still believe that we must put people before profits. To me, stringent regulation of industries that control the pollutants that threaten our communities is the purview solely of this committee, and we should be able to do our jobs unhindered by influences with different objectives. Thank you, Representative Howard. Uh, as for me, I will be supporting this amendment, and I will be supporting this bill Number one, this is something um, we have been discussing for the past six years, and I'd like to see something done about this, uh, citing landfills. I think uh, with DES not, uh, with, with DES's rules expiring next year, um, I believe that with this bill, they will at least have another set of eyes uh, helping them develop new rules and um, I think that that would be a good thing and a good step forward. So, um, if anything, um, I think that this is that's a favorable uh, part of this of this bill that's before us. Representative Haskins. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with respect, I appreciate the work that went into this amendment. I think there are some pieces of it that um, needed to be part of it that. I lament did not become part of the amendment to the bill. Um, respectfully, I have to vote no to this amendment because I think those features were critical to protect the people of New Hampshire. Thus, my vote. Any other discussion? Representative Verbal? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'm also going to vote no on this amendment. I, I don't believe that the Department of Environmental Services uh, actually needs the help of some third party uh, consultant to be able to promulgate rules relative to landfill siting in New Hampshire. We have uh, highly trained professionals with very good pedigrees and I'm quite certain that they can do their, their job. Without knowing who this third party consultancy is to be, uh, it's impossible to know which way they would lean, whether it be towards industry that would uh, anger some or whether it would be uh, towards strict environmental control which would uh, which would anger others. And uh, so for, for that reason, I can't support the amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, uh, I would uh, direct the clerk to please call the roll for Thank this amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're voting on the adoption of Amendment 2023-1979H. Madam Chair. Yes. Representative Bogert. Yes. Representative Comtois. No. Representative Verbo. No. Representative Arnold. Yes. Representative Colcom. Yes. Representative Kalan. 
Representative Kenny. Representative Potenza. No. Representative Smart. Representative Bixby. Yes. Representative Sophikitis. Representative Dutsy. Yes. Representative Murray. Yes. Representative Germana. Yes. Representative Haskins. No. Representative Howard. Yes. Representative Nab. Yes. Representative Horrigan. Yes. Representative Voigt. No. The motion, the amendment is adopted 11 to 9. Thank you. I uh, believe there's another amendment before us. I don't, uh, Representative Potenza, would you like to make a motion? Yes, so I don't know what the exact uh, <laughs> procedure is that I. Yes, I'd like to uh, adopt the amendment, which would be uh, 1980H. Do I hear a second? Representative Potenza, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes. So I have a short opening statement um, before I explain the substance and the minor but critical changes um, that my amendment with my co-sponsor makes to SB 61. I was saddened to find out that members of this committee run amendment changes by DES and Casella for approval. Furthermore, I was even more upset to realize to the extent to which this has occurred with SB 61. Mr. Demers and his client Casella have become the gatekeeper for this legislation. They have been allowed to dictate and direct SB 61 by approving or not approving languages in this bill. Call me new, call me naive, call me whatever you want, but I will not sit silently because it is all wrong. When we listen to paid lobbyist actors like Casella over the real New Hampshire stakeholders, you know, the citizens that we represent, you have to speak up and you have to put up. Hence why I have introduced the Potenza Haskins Amendment. The legislature overwhelmingly voted for HB 56. And with some minor changes, that bill should have been passed and signed by the governor. But because Casella didn't like that bill, here we are. Representative Potenza, I don't believe we have any kind of proof or, or um, any information uh, regarding what Casella has said or not said, and I don't believe this bill has really anything to do with Casella. It has, or, to, or with Forest Lake or with Dalton. This has to do with establishing siting rules for DES for siting landfills. And I would, I would hope that you would uh, suspend any discussion about <coughs> uh, lobbyists or Casella or anyone else. Please speak to the legislation. Okay. The Bixby Amendment does nothing to improve the inherently flawed SB 61. It is time to call what it is. There are very bad actors that are using um, political and financially lobbying efforts which influence and create bias by the governor and the Senate and circumvent the obvious and blatant will of the people, our constituents that only want clean water and not untoxic living uh, environments for themselves and their families. In addition, many of these constituents who have diligently and respectfully contacted this committee and been in attendance at committee meetings whom have considerable and diverse expertise on the subject will not be ignored by me. Wasn't this what I was elected to do? It is time to be brave and make doing the right thing popular again. So, the minor changes in my amendment, every single, um, every single amendment that Representative Bixby put in is in the Potenza Haskins one of 1980H. And then there's specific things that are, as I go through, Sorry. 
So the first thing is under, in regards with necessary for rules to um, provide adequate protection of perennial surface water, adequate has been removed and it is provide perennial surface water with an ample margin of safety. Um, obviously, adequate is, uh, every, you know, you and I can think about what things adequate, someone else that's really more of a determinant in an industry related term. Um, ample is specifically going to help in regards with that. Oh, yes, can you please reference the line that you're talking about? Yes. Page so. in line. So it is uh, three, new paragraph under... Is that page two, page two, three, page yes, one? Yes, page two, I'm sorry. Three under 3A, line nine. On page two, sorry. The next is uh, a same page under B, which is, um, it removes the word uh, representative under B, the volume gradient. So it's basically now says to measure or model travel time and its variability across the site. The next is on page three, lines line seven um, under under B is changed to if a permit application proposes any measure pursuant to 149 M9 XVA and the department relies on those measures in their formulation of the site specific setback required by 149 M73A, the department shall require implementation of those measures as condition to any permit. Same page under five, um, line 16. Pretty much what was added to this is the draft request shall require each proposal to provide a statement of any potential conflicts of interest with any entity that may benefit from any changes in setback requirements, indicating that preference may be given to firms or individuals without such conflicts of interest or to firms or individuals with the fewest conflicts of interest. The draft request will also indicate that preference will be given to proposals which demonstrate that qualified consulting firms or individuals have credentials and experience in evaluating the health and safety risks associated with the environmental protection as well as the engineering and hydrogeological aspects of landfill design and sitting. Page four puts the legislature back in, um, in the place that it needs to be. Line 10, item two, the selected contractor shall, shall complete the assessment and submit a final report to the department. Whoops, wait a minute, that's not it, sorry. Oh, that's missing now. Yes, there it is. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so it's page five, line six. The commissioner of the Department of Environmental Services shall report to the House and Environment and Agriculture Committee and the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee by November 4th, 14th, 2024, relative to the pro progress of the rulemaker and under this act. If the commissioner believes that he or she will not be able to complete the rulemaking process within the 24 month period allotted, he or she shall report to the committees how much time he or she deems necessary to complete the rulemaking process. And, and that is it.
Okay, um, sorry, Representative Haskins. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Obviously, um, we did not have a lot of time to put this new amendment together. I wanna thank my colleague, who happens to be on the other side of the aisle, for all her hard work. Um, I, I co-sponsor this amendment because these are the changes that many of us wanted in the bill, and we did not get them in the amendment. Um, we sent the Senate a very good bill. They sent us back 61, which I don't believe is adequate protection for all the citizens of New Hampshire. We can't be naive. There, there is a reason why there's pressure on this bill right now. And as a lake person, it matters very much to me that we are very careful about where we put our landfills. And since there is no current need for a landfill in New Hampshire for probably 20 years, we do not have to bow to the pressure that we have received. So that is why I am happy to co-sponsor the Potenza Haskins Amendment. Thank, Thank you, you, Representative Haskins. We get Representative Verbal. Thank you, Madam Chair. So. I'm a little nervous about the, the amendment in that it seems to be particularly uh, open-ended uh, with respect to the last point, uh, which originates on, on page five, uh, section four. Uh, so the, the commissioner is gonna report to the legislature the progress of the rulemaking. And if the commissioner believes that uh, they will not be able to complete the rulemaking process within two years, that person, uh, the, the commissioner, shall report to the committees how much more time deemed necessary. So if the commissioner shows up and says, boy, I'm, I'm close, I would say within another 10 to 12 years, we're going to have this buttoned up. There's, there's, no, there's no pushback in the, in the amendment. So in fact, the, the rulemaking process as this amendment is laid out um, potentially could be an infinitum. For that reason, I, I don't think I can support this uh, this amendment, although I appreciate the uh, the intent in which it was filed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Representative Pixby. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Representative Germana, you had your hand up. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Bixby. Uh, I, a phrase we use a lot when we're considering legislation is, we can't let the, uh, the perfect be the enemy of the good, and, and that is often overused, but it is something I genuinely believe. I do feel, and that's where I have been coming again and again and again as we think about this bill. I, we've gotten to a point where I, I don't think we're in the area of the good anymore. So uh, I will be supporting the amendment. Representative Bixby? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I wish that uh, I, I wish that if this amendment were attached to the bill, that the bill would have a hope of passing. Uh, but uh, I was told point blank by a member of the other body this morning that if the governor does not support the bill, that there would not be a Senate concurrence. And I don't like that game. I don't like the fact that we're passing a bill that is much weaker than I think it ought to be. Uh, but I go back to the idea of either having that two years of abeyance or having permits starting next as soon as the uh, non-concurrence comes down. And as a result of that, I can't support this amendment and I'll be supporting the bill as it was previously amended. Representative Howard. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I agree with um, Representative Bixby and, and Representative, Representative Germana, but I, I am hanging my hat on the abeyance part because I think that if we, if we were to leave any opening, there is a very good chance that, that bad actors or people who's, who don't care as much as we do about pollution and, and toxins will jump into the breach. Representative Haskins. Thank you, Madam Chair. With respect, 
If we don't like the way the game is played, let's not play the game. And that's why I co-sponsored the Potenza Haskins Amendment. I don't think we should act in good conscience under threat. We are a legislative body. We make the laws. Let's make a law we believe in. And if the other side doesn't accept it, that's on them. Thank you. Representative Verville. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have to admit that I, I found the testimony of Representative Pixby to be quite compelling. Uh, and for that reason, I've, I've changed my position. I will support this amendment, but I will not be supporting uh, the, the underlying bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other discussion? OK. Representative Dutsey. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I agree. I, I mean, first of all, we have three branches of government, and we have them for a reason for checks and balances. And yes, as a legislative body, we certainly have the right to put forward any legislation that we deem is in the best interest of the people of New Hampshire. I would have hoped that would have been two previous bills that came before this committee that were vetted, uh, that were excellent bills. Um, they should have passed. They should have overridden the veto, but the other body chose not to do that. However, we have to recognize the political realities. Uh, we do have a government where the executive branch can exercise its veto power. Uh, we all agree with that, even though sometimes we don't like it. Uh, so for that reason, recognizing the political powers, I will be voting against this amendment, even though um, I do see what it's trying to do, and I will vote for the bill uh, with the appropriate amendment, hopefully, uh, because that's the political reality that we live under. And I agree that the 24-month the moratorium is the best deal that we can make right now. Any other comment? Representative Suffolkitis. I just want to thank everybody for their um, their steadfastness in thinking about this and for um, putting in amendments. I'm, I'm very pleased because um, that's what we're here for, to take care of our stakeholders. Thank you. Any other comment? Representative Kulan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, yeah, I'd just like to say that um, I'll be supporting this amendment, and I just want to add a little bit of, um, you know, texture to it. I've been put under a lot of pressure myself and received a lot of emails from different people regarding this subject, and I think it is possible that some of that, um, you know, concern could be transferred to the executive branch if we were to pass an amendment like this. So that's my... That's what I got, and uh, thank you, everyone. Any other comment? Seeing none, no, I'm sorry, Representative Potenza, I did not see your hand. When this committee was hearing the testimony, um, there was, in a sense, like a, you know, from the table, there was a, a threat, like, okay, well, you can't make any changes to this or, you know, it's, it's not going to go through. The governor's going to veto it. And that is not how things work, as other representatives have said, with their bodies and stuff like that. And I just have to say that putting some things in, like, let's remind everybody here that 56 was passed, you know, overwhelmingly. And we're making, in a sense, uh, a concession, a couple concessions in here to a study, that's, we've made 56 a study now, and that's, that's a gigantic concession. So if we're trying to make this study a little bit stronger, with more safeguards and guardrails, isn't that something that the governor shouldn't object? Doing the right thing, we have to do the right thing. And I don't think we need to think about what this other body or what this other entity is doing. We need to do what's right for our constituents. That's why this is important to go through. 
And uh, that's all I have to say. Representative Comtois. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want a clarification on something uh, that was stated earlier. So if, uh, I'm just gonna ask a general question, okay? So if they need more time, there is no, they can have an extension as cited for up to 10 years. If they do not meet the deadline, does that mean that landfill siting can begin after the two year period uh, with the current rules? Representative Germano. Uh, thank you, and, and this is a question that is in tandem with Re uh, Representative Comtois' question, because I think that is a, it's a good point. I, if I'm not mistaken, in Representative Bixby's amendment, uh, which we have adopted, it, it references, in, in terms of an extension, it references an already existing RSA, correct? So I agree that the language as it is existent in 1980H is open-ended. That's, that's a really good point. But I believe that there are, in fact, uh, rules already in place regarding an extension that I assume would be valid in this case as well. Because as I said, the Bixby Amendment refers specifically to a set of rules. So that's, there's a question in there. Is, um, is there already a mechanism for such an extension that would not, in fact, leave it completely wide open? Representative Murray. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. This is a question for the chair, actually, um, if I may. Sure. Um, if this amendment were to be adopted, it would then supersede the previous amendment. Is that not correct? I am right now checking with the clerk, so I'll let you know in a moment. Oh, Representative. I will know in a moment, <laughs> Representative Comtois. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Uh, and this is a question for the sponsor of this legislation. I don't believe my question has been answered. Would you restate your question? Thank you, Madam Chair. The question was, if you can extend the rulemaking process for an infinite time period, are you still, are you then able to postpone the siting of landfills for an infinite time period based on the wording in here? Representative Potenza, would you please reply? So I believe that this is not infinite. It is just if the, they can't meet the 24 months requirement, then it does go back to effect of what the current um, statute is in place. It's just, of course, how it was written, um, and I took that same language from Representative Bixby in regards with a 90-day extension, um, DES can't give itself the authority to do that. So that's why this, if the department does not adopt the rules in accordance with, um, that they can, basically they're asking for it, but it doesn't leave it open-ended. It goes back to the previous year in regards what it has to be done in 24 months. Okay. Did that answer your question, Representative Comtois? Um, and I just uh, re received uh, information from our clerk, Paul, Paul Smith, saying that, um, and I, the question was what happens if two amendments on a bill pass that may not work together um, in the committee, and he said you have to merge amendments to only have one amendment from the committee. If they don't work together, it's going to be an issue. So. Um, seeing that, um, passing both of these amendments would be problematic. And uh, I would just leave it at that, Representative Bixby. Okay, <clears throat> so I was just reading on page five, uh, um, starting at line six, uh, uh, section Roman four, uh, and I do not see in this section anything that continues the abeyance, which means that uh, as this amendment is currently written, the abeyance will still disappear at 24 months, 
and then uh, citing can begin under old rules if the new rules are not yet written. And I think that, um, I don't think that was the intent of this amendment. I think the, this, that the, the, the intent was probably to have a continuance of, continuation of that abeyance, but it is not written that way uh, right now. And I think that uh, if the author, if the supporters of this amendment want it to come forward in a way that is sufficiently strong, it should probably be offered as a floor amendment, uh, not uh, offered right now as, a, as, as part of the committee. I would concur with that, Representative Bixby. Any other discussion on this m amendment? Representative Verville. Thank you, Madam Chair. And while I don't disagree with the, with the, the previous discussion, um, the, the odds of a floor amendment is certainly um, unclear, especially without uh, some indication of a committee recommendation. So um, I don't, I don't know that uh, that I would allow the concept of adding this later as a floor amendment uh, as a possibility to sway one's vote. I'm not advocating right now. I'm not advocating for or against. I just, I don't, I don't think that it's necessarily a good strategy for the sponsor and the co-sponsor uh, to withdraw an amendment and hope they can get it passed on the, that, on the floor of the House, especially uh, late in the session where things start to get rushed and people want to go home. So uh, I would encourage you to, to, to vote your conscience on the amendment and see uh, where it falls. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. We, did you have a question? Uh, I think Representative Oh, Representative Haskins, I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's obvious that we didn't have a lot of time to put this together, and, mm -hmm. I, and I suppose the amendment reveals that. I, I don't have a lack of confidence in DES to get this rulemaking done. There's no way that they would drag it out year after year. That just doesn't behoove anyone's interest. I wish the wording could be amended that would preclude that drawing out for infinity. But again, the, we're talking about professionals. I, I just don't see that as a realistic option that it would happen. Um, I don't know if we can on the fly add that abeyance is important to all of us, every one of us. So if our amendment could be amended <laughs> to put abeyance in that section, I would love to do that. I believe it's a little late because we would we are voting on this amendment today now. <laughs> Representative Germana. Thank you, Madam Chair. I had an idea and I thought better of it and I thought better of thinking better of it. Uh, so, <laughs> so thank you. Um, I, one of the issues that I've repeatedly raised is a concern about the extension of the abeyance and whether it could be made a shall. Uh, clause as opposed to a may clause and how that might work and I talked to OLS about that so that has been a concern of mine. From our discussions however I, I become increasingly to think that I'm not also not concerned that this is not going to be completed in a 24 month period in part because I think one of the things that that was made clear throughout all of her testimony is we're not talking about new science here right we actually already have the science uh, that we need in order to, to, to make the current rules. We could do a survey of states around us and look at a variety of options. DES could present those to this committee and to the legislature, and then the legislature could, could drive that process. So I don't actually think that there's any danger that this is not going to be completed in a 24-month period. So uh, while I, I, I think the point is, is a really good one, I think it is left vague and, and would prefer it not to be, I don't see a danger in it extending beyond the 24 month period. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, um, any other comments or questions on this particular amendment? So I will reiterate what, uh, what I've heard here from the um, house clerk that um, we would have to merge these amendments to have only one amendment from the committee. If they don't work together, it's going to be an issue. So seeing as we've passed 
um, the previous Bixby Amendment. Um, passing this amendment too will cause many problems. I don't know how that would be rectified um, because there is different language in both of these amendments. And for that reason, I can't support this amendment. Are there any other questions or comments about this? Um, I would say that uh, the clerk should call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're voting to adopt Amendment 2023-1980H. Madam Chair. No. Representative Bogert. No. Representative Comtois. Yes. Representative Verville. Yes. Representative Davis. No. Representative Col Colcom. No. Representative Coulon. Yes. Representative Kenny. Representative Potenza. Yes. Representative Smart. Representative Bixby. No. Representative Sophokitis. Representative Dutsey. No. Representative Murray. No. Representative Germana. Yes. Representative Haskins. Yes. Representative Howard. No. Representative Knapp. No. Representative Horrigan. No. Representative Voigt. Yes. Motion fails, the vote is 10 to 10. Thank you. Now, do I hear a motion? Ought to pass with the am amendment? Representative Bixby. I move ought to pass with amendment on 1979H. Any questions or comments? Uh, I second that, I'm sorry. Uh, I second that uh, motion. Uh, Representative Bixby, would you like to speak to your motion? Uh, I think we've covered the ground fairly thoroughly, so I think we should just move to the vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, Representative Germana. Uh, excuse me, Madam Speaker, second that? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I want to say, first of all, that I appreciate all the, the hard work and I respect the integrity of, uh, of my committee colleagues who work so hard to make this bill something we can live with. I want the public uh, who are here or the public who are watching, uh, streaming online, I, I, want to, I want to let them know that everybody on this committee is working with the best interests. I genuinely believe everyone on this committee is working with the best interests of the people of the state of New Hampshire in mind. This is a, a sausage making process and, uh, and, and it can be really difficult at times, but but I have enjoyed working with all of you. And as I said, I don't doubt for a moment your commitment, anyone on this committee, to, uh, to the people of this state. The, the more I told myself that some bill was better than no bill, the more ultimately I came to realize that I was just trying to justify voting for a bill that in the end I can't support. When we look at a couple of, of examples of language that we couldn't get into the bill, to me, this is just stunning. We couldn't get ample margin of safety into the bill because of political pressure and pressure from a lobbyist. We couldn't get variability across a site. If we can't have testing that gives us variability across a site, you could test within, I don't know, a 50 square foot section. You could put down 10 test drills in a 50 square foot section. That's not a site specific test. That's a 50 square foot specific test that gives the desired result. In the end, as I said, I do genuinely believe that we can't let the enemy or the perfect be the enemy of the good. This bill crossed a line at a certain point where I no longer felt we were actually doing the good. So again, I want to appreciate the work of all of my colleagues uh, and uh, express my admiration for all of the work that this committee has done and how well, Madam Chair, you have conducted these, these hearings, but in the end, I cannot vote for the bill. Thank you. Representative Howard. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, while I agree 100% with Representative Girana, except for voting against this bill, we are buying ourselves time with this. We, and I believe that it's important time. I think it's a, it's a good, um, 
a good uh, purchase of, of time and um, I would hope that people would support it so that we can do something better in the next two years. Representative Haskins. I too have used the metaphor about the perfect and the good, but I don't think it is good as it stands, which is why I can't vote for it. And I also don't think that the amendments necessarily conflict. Uh, you know, I don't know enough about the process, but I, I don't think that they are conflicting amendments. So that um, comment from the clerk um, doesn't outline expressly what can be done about that. Thank you. Representative Verbal. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I agree with uh, two of the three previous speakers um, for not the reasons they outlined, uh, but I, I agree that, that this bill, um, even as amended, is, is not a good bill. It is, it is not the solution that any of us are looking for. Um, it has flaws on, on both, both sides of the perspective, um, and for that reason, I too uh, am not going to vote in favor of passage. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any, uh, any other comments, questions? Okay, I will direct the clerk then to call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're voting on SB 61 as amended by 2023-1979H. Madam Chair. Yes. Representative Bogert. Yes. Representative Comtois. No. Representative Verbal. No. Representative Davis. Yes. Representative Colcom. Yes. Representative Kulon. Yes. Representative Kenny. Representative Potenza. No. Representative Smart. Representative Bixby. Yes. Representative Sophokitis. Representative Dutzy. Representative Murray. Yes. Representative Germana. No. Representative Haskins. No. Representative Howard. Yes. Representative Nab. Yes. Representative Horgan. Yes. Representative Voigt. No. Motion passes 12 to 8. Thank you, everybody on this committee. I want to, uh, I appreciate all the work, the discussion. Um, I feel your frust frustrations. Um, but in the end, I think uh, us putting something that we can bring back um, to the Senate uh, will be something that will be workable. And um, I would also like to uh, extend my apologies to um, Mr. Demers publicly because I believe it's inappropriate to attack anybody personally from this body. Um, and there were some words that were said earlier, which um, I was disappointed to hear. Uh, so please accept uh, at least my apology for, um, for those words. And Representative Bixby. So <clears throat> I'd also like to thank the committee for working diligently on this bill. Uh, I have been um, Frustrated that we have not been able to get the bill we would have liked to pass both bodies. I think that HB 56 was a much better bill than what we have just passed. Uh, but uh, I think that it is really important to have the time without having to worry about a permit going into the next two years to uh, get better rules than what we have now. And I also appreciate uh, the, uh, this, when we discussed uh, this a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the possibility of having a subcommittee from this committee that would be uh, working on oversight of the entire process. And I hope that we carry through on that. And I hope that we get uh, members from both sides of this vote 
uh, as well as both sides of this aisle, to uh, of the aisle to uh, participate in that oversight committee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think we will set up a subcommittee depending on what happens um, with this bill as it goes forward. Um, also, I imagine, uh, Representative Bixby, that you will be writing the majority report for this? I will be, I will be writing the majority report. Um, I think that those who are in opposition to the bill should decide who they want as to write the re minority report bit because I think it might come out on, I, I think that the votes against were not always all for the same reason. So I think that those who are in the minority should uh, decide among themselves who should write that minority report. Okay, Representative Verbal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I noticed the minority report coming down. I have no problem yielding to others if they prefer to uh, write that minority report. There's obviously going to be a floor fight on this bill, and I'd be more than artic more than happy to articulate uh, my opposition um, during uh, the floor debate if, if somebody else prefers to write the minority report. Representative Haskins. As co-sponsor of the bill, I'd be happy to write the report. Okay. Thank you. Representative Murray. Uh, thank you. This is a question for you, Madam Chair. Is there a majority and a minority report for each potential amendment or because the amendment no. didn't carry? No. Okay. The thank bill you. as a whole. Okay. Thank you. And so I would like to have that uh, minority report this afternoon, if possible, or this evening. You can email it to me. Uh, same with you, Representative Bixby. Okay. Thank you. Representative Horrigan. Well, I'm, I'm just a substitute, so I, I missed a lot of the beginning, but it, I sounded like what Representative Potenza and Haskins, what they had in mind was sort of a superset of what Representative Bixby gave us. So they approved of everything that was in the Bixby Amendment, but they may have worded some of it differently, I guess, and then they had more before. Is that, is that my correct understanding of what happened? Or? It was slightly different, yes. yes. Any other questions or comments? So we will be having, a, uh, I'm going to end the exec session for SB 61, first of all. Thank you everyone for all your work and discussion, um, working together and um, agreeing to disagree on some things. Thank you. Now we 